stressed out Watch you drive away from the house That we made a home together So much for forever the New plans, gotta move on Hello everyone! Welcome to Wuchina Twin Time. I am Ian Wuchina. This is my twin brother, Ivan Wuchina. And today we are with the myth, the legend, the man. The horror Mark. icon. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maru. Or Maru. Woo. Yeah. Mark Maru. <laughs> Say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. uh, where we grew up, it was Maru. But uh, we yeah, did hear yeah, a voiceover yeah. a couple years ago where you where you mentioned your name was Mark Maru. It was some sort of, um like, uh, you did it in, like, French. It was like a voiceover for some radio yeah, spot yeah, or something. Yeah. Okay. We kind of figured out from there that's how you pronounce yeah, your last yeah, name. We were like, that's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. grew up seeing this guy on TV, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are totally psyched to be interviewing him. Yeah, we're yeah. We're so it's glad we got fun. Yeah. this together. Uh, yeah. So, we got a list of questions. Yeah, we got some yeah, questions yeah. written down. Uh, how are you today, man? Hey, Ben, I'm, I am so good. I am stoked to be here. I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be talking to you guys face to face because you were in the music video. Yes, we yes, yeah. Fuck you, COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, we got to be in that awesome video. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when you, when you uh, mentioned it to us, we were like, okay, we have to do this. And then yeah, you said yeah. and you brought in people from all over the world. How was that? You know what? It, it, was, it was actually quite a project because, you know, I, I had asked for people to submit some video. Um, and not everybody is, is as technically savvy mm -hmm. as uh, I would think. So there was, there was a bit of customer support technical support that, that kind of had to happen uh, with some people, but, and then others, you know, they like, they, they sent it a fully edited thing. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Which, which, which they're like, oh yeah, this it's fully edited. Just use whatever you want, you know? And, and I, I, it, so there was quite a difference, but uh, I, I did um, send it out as an email to all of my subscribers. I had a good response there, but I did also reach out to a lot of people just to say, Hey, just so you know, you know, it, it, this is happening. Um, and, uh, I'm amazed at the response that I got. I'm yeah. really pleased with it, you know? But seeing it all together was just like an awesome experience. Yeah, yeah, and we're hearing MTV's gonna play it or the next month or something like that, yeah. Yeah, man, it, it's going on MTV on uh, the 28th of August. Oh, oh that's wow, amazing. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, like, we're saving the date. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. saving the date. That's great. Congratulations yeah. on that, Congratulations, man. man. We're really, yeah. like, happy for you hearing about all this awesome buzz yeah, you're getting yeah, with yeah. your music career and all that. That's yeah, just, that, yeah, is, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Thank and, um, you. Yeah. Oh, exactly, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 freaking awesome because we've been fans of yours since like yeah, literally day one. So yeah, yeah, it's great to see seeing all like seeing your career yeah, like yeah. you know you, you just seeing you keep it's expanding now. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. like you know because you know, we know that you started out in music as a kid, right? You know, you, you well, you did a lot of, like musical theater, like acting. Yeah, know? I know you played a choir boy in like Car Fifty Four yeah, yeah. or something like so that. So you're a multi talented person. You know, you're oh, this. Yeah. It says yeah. that on the back of the here yeah. We go, yeah the Paperboy VHS yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. I, I I was in Car Fifty Four. Where are you? Where are you? Um, but I think they actually cut me. I think yeah. I wound up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> the back of the VHS cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, don't, I don't get to pick what they say. You know, like uh, a lot of the times they'll say, "Oh, you know, starring Mark Maru, known for such projects as," and they just yeah. pick whatever. I I don't get to tell them so. Here it's Republic Pictures, but in Canada, I think uh, Columbia TriStar put it on video. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were saying, you're like this multi-talented person, a successful actor, musician. So it's like we just—it's kind of cool to see you mm -hmm. kind of like integrate all that into the video and then the, oh, yeah, the visual you make, effects. The green screen like stuff you do oh, is yeah. really cool. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. watch the Song of a Bitch video, and there's mm -hmm. all sorts of cool green screen yeah. effects. Oh, we, were, yeah, we were actually yeah. mentioning how you play like what, like 200 roles in that video. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you know, you there's that. like you're playing like. 10, yeah. 10 versions of yourself. He's like superposing yeah, himself yeah. with the green screen. Yeah. Uh, like, and yeah, it's just yeah, like, he's, cool. yeah, he's yeah. like, a, um, yeah. what was his name? Who played the, the, the... Deep Roy? Deep Roy. He's like Deep Roy in the remake of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Yeah, Factory. he played every Oompa Loompa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of reminded me of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. uh, you know what? I actually haven't gone to the trouble of counting, but I, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, where'd you grow up? I, uh, originally I was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, but I grew up in Oakville. Moved there when I was like uh, three years old, Oakville, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. Okay, oh, cool. cool. Yeah, we drove through there when we were, I think, around 11 to go to Niagara Falls, so we ended up driving through there. We went back to school that summer after going to Niagara Falls, acting so pompous, we like, felt, we're yeah. world travelers, went to Niagara Falls, what did you guys do? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. cultured now, yeah. So. We're cultured, yeah, yeah. yeah. And your, your mom was from England? Or, yeah, she was born in London. And your dad from France, oh, that's great, yeah, my yeah. mom, and I went on a trip in 2018 to London and Paris. So 
who knows? I might have run into some of your relatives. Yeah, we're thinking that. <laughs> oh man, two amazing places. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, How did you first get into acting? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh man, that was uh, that that was a weird sort of scenario because I just completely fell into acting by accident. Um, I actually I was nine years old. I was a member of the school choir at uh, Ecole Saint Marie in Oakville, which is a French school, obviously. Um, and I remember I was in Cub Scouts. And there was a party at the end of the year, right? Where like only the cool kids got to go. You had to have 10 badges or more, right? And I only had eight. <laughs> and I really, really wanted to go to this party because I'm like, fuck man, all the cool kids are going there. You know, you know, when, when you're nine years old, right? Like you, you have different priorities in life. Exactly, yeah, yeah, we get it. We were in Scouts too, yeah, yeah. Cool, so, so my dad was a leader. Uh, he, he was one of the pack leaders or whatever. And, um, he had organized where if I auditioned for Les Mis, I could get what was known back then as a Troubadour's badge, which nowadays I think is called like a performer's badge or something. Um, and I thought, man, that's going to be really tough because I'm, I'm only nine years old. I'm pretty nervous about doing the audition, but at the same time, it's another badge. I'm almost there. I get to party with the cool kids. Fuck it. I'll do it. So uh, he took me to the audition and I got a call back. And when my mom found out that I had the call back, at first she didn't believe us at all. She's like, oh, you guys are full of shit. You're, you're pulling my leg, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then when she got the call from the production company, uh, from Mervis uh, Productions, she, would, she all of a sudden started to take this very seriously. And being a school teacher herself, she hooked me up with all of her school teacher friends. Mm -hmm. So I got singing lessons. I got, um, like, uh, theater sort of lessons from one of the drama teachers, you know, and, and she did her best to prepare me for the audition. And I did the audition and then got the role. Nice, nice. <laughs> nice. And then yeah. the crash yeah. course and everything you needed to know. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had a good badge. And then you got the badge. Yeah. I got the badge, but I didn't get to go to the party. What? Oh. <laughs> I was too busy. I was in rehearsals. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Led into something even cooler, so that's yeah, great. There you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, what are some performers that inspired you? Yeah, like growing as up as a kid, or actors, even now, you know, as, actresses. Yeah, yeah. like as an actor, or especially as a kid, you yeah. know, like as a kid, you know, you really soak all that stuff in. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you mean like uh, in in terms of that inspired me for my acting, or that I just found inspirational to hang out with? Um, we'll we'll probably get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll one get to later, that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Like one that inspired you, like as an actor, like when you were getting into acting. Yeah, like, like, in the man. Uh, I mean, now now we're going back decades, right? So I'm I'm trying to remember what was my mentality as yeah. as a nine ten year old kid. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, De Niro's classic, right? So yeah, obviously I love De Niro. I, I remember uh, growing up, I loved Joe Pesci as oh. well. I like all, all the gangster style movies and and everything. Always wanted to stab someone in the neck with a pen. <laughs> oh man. Casino. Yeah. Never really got the chance, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Other stuff in paper, boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> in terms of actual, like, acting ability, as I got older, I would say that uh, I, I really admire Emma Stone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Her, her, her performance level is just beyond. Um, I, I, everything, everything that I watch of her, like, I, I, I feel what she's thinking, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, so th those are, those are some actors that, that inspired me, I guess, when I was younger, like, uh, I loved all the action movies. I wanted to be an action movie hero, yeah. you know, um, uh, Bruce Willis, oh, uh, yeah. I to do stuff like Bruce Willis, like Die Hard and, and shit, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. That was like, he was just, and the thing about him is he was like the everyman. But he was this action star, and he kind of changed the game in terms yeah, of like who yeah, could be yeah. cast as an action star, yeah, yeah. And who couldn't. But so I was kind of like, you have to be a big gorilla like Schwarzenegger or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or a martial arts expert or something. And, and yeah, it was funny because he actually came from a comedy background. Uh, well, well, he was he was more known at that time for like moonlighting and stuff, right? I wanted to beat people up and uh, and shoot guns, basically, yeah. is, is what I wanted to do. You know that you're also uh, pretty uh, talented in jujitsu, right? We read that uh, on a um, I think you're Wikipedia. I think it was on IMDb. Yeah, IMDb, yeah. yeah. I mentioned, you know, I mentioned you traveled like around Canada and the United States doing jujitsu, like mm -hmm. competitions and things like that. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I did a bunch of martial arts tournaments. I was really involved in martial arts when I was younger. 
Um, I, I became proficient in four. So I uh, got really good at jiu-jitsu and uh, hungar kung fu, uh, two main ones. But also a lot of the competitions that I did were um, grappling, which nowadays you would refer to as Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You know, basically it's like submission wrestling, you know. Um, yeah. As well as uh, La Punti Arnis de Abanico, which is Filipino stick fighting. Oh, oh nice. okay. Awesome. Actors you worked with who inspired you or yeah. you learned the most from? Yeah, like who'd you learn the most from that you maybe worked with in your actors? You worked career? with a lot of great, like, you know, yeah. legendary actors and actresses. Yeah, and yeah. Actors. Yeah, actually, I, now, now that I think about it, I did work with a bunch. Um, Eugene Levy is the one who taught me that I should be putting cream cheese and jam on my croissant. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> what would you work with Eugene on? Uh, Road to Avonlea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Road to Avonlea. Yeah. 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 That, so, that was that was like a a, a piece of, of life wisdom that I think everybody needs to know is that croissants are great with cream cheese and jam, you know. <laughs> um, I'm trying to imagine that in Eugene Levy's voice right now, like that would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're huge uh, Eugene Levy fans. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you worked with David uh, Carradine in uh, Kung Fu Continues. Did you get to like work with him on set for that episode? I did. Um, not a big fan. Didn't <laughs> didn't really enjoy working with him. Uh, I won't go into any details, <laughs> but but actually, on that episode of Kung Fu The Legend Continues, uh, I got to work with Chris Potter again, because oh, really? I, I had worked with Chris Potter before, but uh, like I was I was really young. It was on a uh, sitcom for CBC called Material World, okay. and I shot him between the eyes with a spitball. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I was like going to door to door selling chocolates or something, and he didn't buy one, so I come back, and I... <laughs> Yeah, you know, right, right between his eyes. Um, but on Kung Fu Legend Continues, we we filmed a scene in an attic, and there was um, a whole bunch of props, obviously, in the attic, and one of them was a guitar. Oh wow! And you know, I was I think I was around 16 years old at the time. I had only started to get seriously into guitar the year before, and so I picked up the guitar and I was playing around with it and everything. And Chris Potter comes over to me and he's like, "Hey man, you play?" I'm like, well, yeah. He says, me too. And he sits down and he starts playing the guitar. And, and uh, he showed me how to play Tie Your Mother Down by Queen. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's epic. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, was, it was great. You know, I mean, uh, so every time I, I play that song, I think of Chris Potter. So now that's a great memory. Man. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, you were talking about Road to Avidly. Uh, we used to watch that on like Disney Channel because like, they aired it on like Disney Channel in America. Yeah, yeah, just like Ready or Not was aired on Disney Channel in America. That's where we used to watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. so uh, okay. I just remember watching that show. And then like you know, it takes place around the turn of the century, 1900s. Uh, what was it like, kind of filming like some period piece stuff like that? That must have been kind of fun. Yeah, it was. It was actually really cool, except for when you had to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's like a gazillion buttons that you had to undo, right? That there were no zippers. Or anything. Um, the wardrobe was really hot. There, there was a lot of layers. Um, but I mean, in, in terms of actually filming it, it was great. I, I got to work with uh, my friend Heather Brown, who I had done Miz with. She played um, uh, one of the Cosettes. They, they, they alternated between Cosette and Eponine. Um, there were there were three girls that, that did that. So Heather was on there. Uh, Gemma, I I knew Gemma because I I worked with her brother. Okay. Uh, yeah, Dominic. Um, and I also worked with her father, Lou, because <laughs> Lou had done choreography for, uh, like he was a dance choreographer and he had done the um production of Oliver that I did over in Theater Aquarius. Oh, nice. So I kind of knew the family. That's cool. That is awesome. That's cool. You uh did some instrument work on that. Like there was like a three piece band you and the class would get together and do, uh, did you uh, enjoy doing that? Like getting to play around with instruments and things like that on the show? Playing with the squeeze box? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like the accordion thing. Yeah. Well, Robin does it like a man who knows how to play a squeeze box, you know? Uh, I don't actually play the squeeze box, so I faked it all. Um, but, uh, but you know, I, I, had to, I had to do the rhythm. So that was, yeah, it was fun. Mostly uh, what I remember about Road to Avonlea um, was that they cast me and I had braces. Uh-oh. <laughs> and they, they, they were like, they were the white braces, right? Um, you could barely see them. Yeah. But I think I did two seasons before they finally realized that I had braces. 
And they're like, oh, shit. You, well, it's too late now, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, you can't fire me. Sorry. Yeah. I got to work with, like, a ton of really good people. That's a really popular Christopher Lloyd did an episode or two mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Who, which one? Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. I worked with him. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I played two different characters on the show. Oh, nice. <laughs> Originally, uh, when I was first cast, I did a, uh, I think we were doing a spelling bee or something. Yeah. And that was the episode with Christopher Lloyd on yeah. it. So I got to meet him, hang out with him. Uh, really, really nice guy. Really nice guy. Uh, and then it was only later on that I got cast in the role of Albert Wirtz. Albert yeah. Wirtz, yeah, I always loved your name in that show, Albert Wirtz. <laughs> yeah, so that that show was so popular, and, and you know, the Andy Green Gables folklore, you know, it really kind of took off, and it was on for years, and, you know, you had that awesome character throughout it. And I remember they brought you back for the uh, the Christmas special, like the one that they kind of <laughs> ended up with. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was really cool. You can talk about the Tech War movies. Oh, yeah, uh, we, we yeah. used to watch those uh, Tech War yeah, movies. Yeah, to audiences, Tech War is like, um, it's we, a series of sci-fi novels that William Shatner, William Shatner wrote, wrote, and the, he, uh, they made at least... They, they, made, made, they made four TV movies and I think a TV and series. TV series. And, and you, were, you were in three of the television movie. films. And Shatner directed the first one, so that yeah. must have been cool. Yeah, how was yeah, it working yeah. with Shatner as a director on the, the first Tech War film? Shatner was awesome. He was very business. He was very business. And and, and um, he wanted to get things moving. He, he wanted to stay on schedule. I think he was also one of the producers on that. Um, but what stands out most in my mind was the actual audition for Tech War. Because... I went into the room, Shatner was there. He had really done his research. Uh, he had asked me what the best sushi place was in Toronto. Um, you know, cause, cause it was kind of unusual for, you know, at, at that time for a teenager to like sushi, I guess. Um, he had spoken to the director of Street Legal cause I did an episode of Street Legal just before. Yeah. And she had told him that I could cry on cue. So he was like, all right. This time, do it, but cry. <laughs> he actually talks like that, by the way. Just, okay. just so you know, yeah, he, he talks like that in real life. So I did it for him, and, and, I, and I cried. Um, and, you know, the audition went really well. And then at the end, I went up to him, like, Mr. Shatner, um, can you do me a favor? Because my brother's a big fan. Can you sign these Star Trek cards? Oh, <laughs> And he was like, yeah, no problem. So he, t- he signed them and he gave them back to me. And, and I remember I got in the car with my mom because she was driving. And we turned on the radio and it was a show where they it was like talk radio. And they said, oh, yeah, Shatner's in town. Whatever you do, don't ask the guy for his autograph. <laughs> He's a total asshole. You know, and I, I'm like, fuck, I just blew it. <laughs> but sure enough, I got the call and, and everything was fine. So I guess whoever was on the radio, uh, approached him at the wrong moment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, those movies had really great production quality and yeah, sets. The visual like, effects. A lot of visual effects are pretty groundbreaking we, for, you know, TV and movies yeah. and stuff that, like, in the mid-90s, yeah. And we yeah. recently rewatched a couple of them. Yeah, um, they're on YouTube, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were, and it was, like, going down memory lane. Remember, they were, like, these big TV events. Yours aired concurrently, I think, through the year of 1994. Yeah. You were in the second one, but you were in the last two TV films, mm-hmm. I remember. And then they, they kind of beefed up your character in the second one. Yeah, by one, the second movie, Because you had, like, yeah. the father-son kind of stuff. And, Drama going and, on, and, uh, yeah, what, yeah. What was the father's name of the actor? Uh, the actor was Greg Evigan. Greg, Greg Evigan, Evigan, yeah. yeah. We're really fans of his daughter, Brianna Evigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she, she kind of, of movies she became, like, yeah. a big teen star. When we were, like, teenagers, she was a star of one of the Step Up movies. All the Step Up uh, movies. We, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. The one movie uh, uh, with Carrie Fisher. Sorority Row. Sorority Row. How was it working with Greg Evigan? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, Greg was awesome. I mean, um, just just a nice guy. We got along great on set. Yeah, I, I don't think that we really hung out uh, aside from our scenes uh, because he was he was really busy, right? Um, it, it was. I think he had a heavy schedule with shooting. When we worked together, like, yeah, he was just your nice, down to earth guy to work with. You know, it's cool. We also noticed that like. We're watching those again, and it's kind of like, you know, there's so many things that kind of, like, took elements from this. Like, all this is from, like, William Shatner's brain, but it's like, we've seen so many projects and so many other sci-fi things that have kind of taken that idea and certain mm-hmm. ideas and, and like, yeah. aspects from that, and they've kind of used it. It's like, man, he kind of was, like, the forefront and of he that. he took a lot of the Star Trek elements, too, and kind of did his own spin on it. Yeah, that's, that's what was, I thought was, was pretty cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then we were, yeah um, how did they do that scene where you blow up in the first film? Remember? Oh, uh, I wonder if I... If I have it, I, it, it might be downstairs. They took a mold of my head. Oh, really? Oh, you got to keep it? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I got the key part of it that's blown up. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what they did was they actually, uh, for, for the robot that blew up, um, they took a mold of my head, and then they cast, like, styrofoam, and then they painted it, put a wig on it, put the head onto a sex doll. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> that they had inflated with, like, uh, propane or something, wrapped it with Primacord, and we did it right in the middle of City Hall. Wow. Okay. And and uh, I, I think they does the this the pavement like the ground with um, like kerosene or something so that you know there there would be some sort of a flame after it exploded. But man, I I remember when it went off. Mm-hmm. You know the uh, I don't know if they broke any windows or not. But one thing I do know is that they left a black mark in the ground because <laughs> of burning kerosene or or whatever fuel they had put underneath it. And they weren't able to get it out, so they got in a lot of trouble from City Hall <laughs> in Toronto. But yeah, that, that's how they did it. And I still have part of my part of the face from the cast um, that was exploded, and uh, and my mother took it and put it into plaster and had it framed. Wow, oh, that is awesome. oh, man, this is great. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really really proud of doing the tech war films. That that was one of my. Awesome. You know, that, that's right up there on my list. Uh, it's one of my favorites, you know. And actually, the um, uh, which one was it? Tech Justice, I think it was called. Uh, or the, the the one with in court. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The kid lawyer was played by Jacob Tierney. What? Oh, yeah. And then you worked with his sister on the Paperboy. Paper Bridget. Bridget. Paperboy, Bridget. Yeah. So when I was shooting the Paperboy, because uh, the first Tech War was filmed in conjunction with the Paperboy. Uh, if I recall, was it? Maybe. Man, it's back so far. Um, I, I remember there was a stipulation in the contract about them not being able to cut my hair or something. Um, but uh, but I, I knew Jacob from having done Tech Justice. So when I was on the paper, boy, like we got to hang out and, you know, it was uh, we, we were good buddies. It's so cool. We so, grew up with Josh and Sam. And that like, movie, Josh and Sam, he was the star so, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like the poster. I have poster that back in his so like, room. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool story here because we're yeah, really yeah. big Jacob Tierney fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's an awesome story. Well, I didn't think, I didn't know you guys got to hang out. That is really cool to hear. And in Tech War, they kind of gave you a lot to do, to do in those movies because you're kind of grappling with thinking your father's like this horrible murderer in the first one. And mm-hmm. then it kind of like your your relationship develops and then he, has to, he tries to win custody of you in the second film mm-hmm. that you were in. Harrison Bergeron. Uh, yes. What's significant about that movie is... Um, in high school, in my English class, my freshman year, uh, we watched, we read the short story that it was based on, then we watched that on video. Mm-hmm. And I know Sean Astin started. Yeah. Did you get to like work with him at all, or get to interact with him at all? Yeah, Sean Astin. No, I didn't get to work with him, uh, unfortunately. I, I just did the last scene mm-hmm. in that, uh, and so that was shot completely separately. Yeah. Um, but that that film stars Miranda De Pontier as well, right? Christopher Plummer, if I recall. So there's, uh, I worked with Miranda. In Les Mis. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All came full circle. Yeah. 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 No, well, I mean, it's one of those things, like, you get to know people, and, and it's like 95% of actors do 90% of the work, right? Or, sorry, 5% of the actors do 95% of the work. If I, you know, apparently 10 out of 1 people are dyslexic, and I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot different than the short story, but I liked how the movie ended and wrapped everything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah And uh, yeah. did you know at the time you'd be acting in a scene with Darth Vader, like when you filmed that scene? I think at the, the end? kid in that scene with you was his, Hayden was Christensen. Was it Hayden Christensen? Yeah. In the when you're both on the bed in the end of the movie. We were movie? looking the movie up on IMDb, and I think it was him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, maybe. I, to, to be honest, I can't remember. Like, uh, it was uh, what I remember about that shoot was just that my agent got in touch with me and said, hey, man, if you're booked on this day, show up and do it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, I didn't even, uh, I, I don't think I read the whole script for it. Uh, it was only afterwards that I that I saw the film where I went, oh, man, that's a great project. You know, I, made, I, I, was, I was smoking a lot of weed at that point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a blur, but... It's it was a great oh, project yeah, to be yeah. part of. It was a big Showtime Network like thing. They yeah, I think it's on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we're pretty sure that's Hayden Christensen in the scene with you in the end because you're yeah, the two yeah. boys on the bed. He's the one behind you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we're watching the scene where uh, where he, he commits suicide. 
Yeah, right? it, that that became a big thing. It was very 1984-ish. Yes, uh, exactly. like like George Orwellian, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's that's one people kind of are still talking about nowadays because it's just you know Sean Astin fans, Christopher Plummer fans, yeah, yeah. you know, just it, the, the story. So yeah, that yeah. One, it's that, obscure but so good. It's yeah, great, yeah, yeah. yeah, great movie. And, and it, it, I mean, you know, like uh, George Orwell, it has so much uh, connection with what's going on today. You know, everywhere in the world. Exactly. You know? and it's like very you're, relevant. And like you're the one you and um in the ending scene, you're one of the people who gets the veil kind of pulled back. And that's kind of why we always like, like your role in the film. Cause you're one of the people who's going to, cause you know, you're going to learn everything that Harrison Bergeron, you know, that was suppressed. Yeah, he exposed the world to all the stuff that they hadn't been told. Like yeah. Harrison yeah. Bergeron, so, and you were like one of the first people kind of in the end, you're kind of watching to kinda it, like, but, yeah. you know, experience stuff. That was cool. Yeah. 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 Definitely, Definitely got to talk, talk about, about uh, goosebumps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the dead house. The episode you yeah, did. Uh, that's you another played Ray. That's a, yeah. You played Ray, kind of the leader of the, Zombie, you know, the leader kids. of the zombie, uh, yeah, the zombie uh, kids. Yeah, and, uh, it, was, it was actually based off the first Goosebumps book ever written, so it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's yeah. actually pretty frightening. We watched it on Netflix last night, it's actually a pretty frightening episode, yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. we grew up watching Goosebumps, and I'm like, man, like, I don't remember being, I don't remember being this kind of spooky, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once and, the zombies try to eat everybody in and, the family. And, uh, another thing uh, yeah. is like that's another one they show in school a lot. Our nephew, he's about ten years younger than us. He talked about watching your episode yeah, in yeah. school with his class. He said his teacher had like every goosebumps, every goosebumps episode, episode on, on video or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah, and he said he liked your episode. So it was like, yeah, I was like, and it's on you, Netflix. So I was yeah. like, did you watch Welcome to the Dead House? And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of there's a new generation just experiencing yeah. that show. It's great. Yeah. It's still around. It's yeah. So how was that experience? Yeah, yeah, with yeah. That? Man, that was it, it. Was really cool because. Uh, it, it, if I recall, it was a two season or sorry, two episode okay. season finale, yeah. right? Um, man, it was it was good. We uh, one thing that sticks out in my mind about when we were filming it was the interiors were done in, uh, I believe it was a, an old Molson building um, on Fleet Street in Toronto, which is right near the the highway, and a car had gone in, had a, a huge accident and actually gone over the guardrail. Oh wow. Ooh. Right there. So I remember when we were filming, um, taking breaks and such, going outside, I could see that the police had, you know, like some caution tape and stuff set up because the car had actually gone off the highway. Uh, that That's one thing that really, really stands out in my mind. Um, aside from the makeup itching as hell. <laughs> it sucked. We were shooting uh, one day in a park. I think we were doing the, the scenes in the forest. And at lunch, I just like ah, I wanted to rip my skin off, you know, because the uh, the the zombie makeup was itching like there was no tomorrow. But aside from those little, you know, <laughs> things, um, it was it was a great it was a great shoot, and it did turn out really well. It has a couple of really good scares in it, yeah. Yeah, and like we said, man, in the '90s when we grew up, like Goosebumps was everywhere. We had the shoes, we had like the clothes, I had toys. Yeah, we had it all. We I had some of them on video. Yeah, I have the little shrunken that head. That was cool that you were a part of that. Yeah. That was just that's that's like in the '90s kids' DNA. Goosebumps, yeah. the books, the show, everything. Yeah, yeah so that was cool. So that, my son is even into Goosebumps, right? Especially with uh, with the Goosebump movies wow. that came out the last few years, right? And uh, he's 11 years old now. Yeah. But I remember when he was younger, you know, he, he would say, oh, dad, let's watch, you know, some Goosebump episodes. And yeah. so I would show him the older stuff. And then one day we were watching Welcome to Dead House and it clicked. <laughs> and just the look on his face, he was like. <laughs> oh, so he didn't expect to see you? <laughs> he didn't. Well, he, at first he didn't recognize me. You know, <laughs> when, when children are, are really young, they don't necessarily notice this type of stuff. But then it was like the light bulb went off. And he was like, that's my dad. Oh, that's awesome. You know? And, and, and I was just sitting there beaming, right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. got it. He finally got it. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Heck yeah. I'm glad he's gotten to see that because that was such a good episode. Yeah, Especially yeah. if he's a huge Goosebumps fan. That, that's an awesome story. Mm -hmm. We'd never seen your Ready or Not episode. We watched that. That's on YouTube yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we, uh, in yeah, because we used to watch the show, but we'd never seen the later episodes. I think it was one of the later seasons. Yeah. So that was cool to see. He played yeah. Henry the Extreme Sports Nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. He, he had long hair in that episode. That was cool. Yeah, it was a little different than the Paperboy look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, you kind of rocked the long hair in the mid-'90s there yeah, for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I think you were actually yeah. one of those things in the show. It cuts into your face, like, upside down or something like that. Yeah, right. Talking yeah. about bungee yeah. jumpers. Yeah. yeah. How it starts is, is I'm doing a headstand against the wall, and, and I'm talking about bungee jumping or something ridiculous right but uh uh and, and I'm, I'm wearing a shirt that 
wardrobe didn't realize it, but it had little beer bottles. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Right. And only after they filmed out those scenes were they like, oh, shoot, maybe we shouldn't have had beer bottles on his, on his clothes, you know? Mm. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was a really fun episode. We, we shot the exteriors at my high school. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because oh. I, I started going to, uh, to a public high school, mm-hmm. um, uh, which was Oakville Trafalgar in Oakville, obviously. And uh, I remember telling all my teachers, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be in class tomorrow. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting uh, ready or not and so on and so forth. And then like the next day I look at the location. I'm like, fuck, is it school? <laughs> and all my teachers are looking to be like, oh, not going to be in class, right? I'm like, I'm, seriously, I'm on set. It just happens to be where I go to school, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it was cool. They gave you like, like, like I'm going to talk about in Goosebumps. You had this great entrance, like, the movie, the show stopped, and then your character comes in, like, after every other kid. That was cool. It was like, yeah, they're like, yeah this guy's the leader, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like out, of the, out of the shadows. So it's kind of cool, Ready or Not did the same thing with that upside-down shot. Yeah, and Ready or Not was... opens on, yeah. Ready or Not was such a groundbreaking show for, you yeah, know, it was a popular uh, show, teenage Lasso. girls, you know, kind of just about teaching about life. It was kind of like, you know, a pioneering show. Yeah, they, you know, touched on things like eating disorders, like all sorts all of, like, of, hot kind of topics, you know. Hot teen, you know, things that, you know, not a lot of yeah, things yeah. were discussing at yeah, that time. Yeah, so yeah, so that was cool. It must have been cool to kind of be a part of, like, a sort of historic show like that, too. Oh, it was it was absolutely great. I mean, uh, uh, I had seen uh, obviously Ready or Not episodes before, um, and in fact, I worked with Laura on uh, Road to Avonlea. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. okay. Well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure which came first. Uh, I, I get a little confused as to the order, but no, it was it was it was great just to be uh, to be around, okay. you know wonderful actors and and to be involved in like you said <laughs> such a groundbreaking show right because they did tackle a lot of subjects oh, society's yeah. really changed a lot in the last you know 20 25 years mm-hmm. um what what seems to be pretty acceptable nowadays back then was actually pretty taboo yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Right? yeah. cruel justice with uh, a martinez was kind of like another one of those movies that tackled some some pretty <laughs> tough subjects and i know uh yeah. you, but you were one of vince carraza's buddy he played uh, Grant Chadway, kind of the you know the one the bad guy and the one who attacked uh, A. Martinez's daughter. And you were one of his buddies that was like his enforcer throughout the film. So I remember uh, I kind of I've kind of been able to catch that on YouTube recently too. So we've kind of been going through a lot of your stuff lately, which has been fun. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I I think you guys know uh, better than I do. I remember it, but but I'm I'm going back quite a ways, right? Because that that's not recent stuff here. We wanted, that. wanted, we wanted to, take we wanted you to kind of have yeah, you like pick you know, your brain scratch a little bit, scratch yeah, your yeah. melon a little bit, and like yeah, bring in yeah. some stuff. So that's cool. Martinez was just you know he was scary in that movie because he's the mm-hmm. father trying to you know avenge his daughter. So that must have mm-hmm. been kind of intimidating. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I understand his position, his character's position, because you know, wouldn't you feel that way if that happened to your daughter? Oh yeah, true, true, true. So yeah, you know, I, I was, I wasn't the bad guy myself, but. Uh, but yeah, I was part of a group that was, you know, out to intimidate, yeah. and uh, I wasn't supporting a good cause. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? And then the ending, man, when he just pulls the trigger, and when it, I did not see that coming at all, because it, you know, that, that, there's lead up to it, but you still, that's still like kind of like, whoa, that really just happened. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was that was yeah. pretty in your that face. That was a cool yeah. movie. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely have to talk about the paper boy. Uh oh. The paper boy. I'm sorry, I forget this film. Which film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, the paper boy. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got, so we'll kind of set up our connection to the movie. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. I think we're about eight years old the first time we saw it. And it, it came on, on USA Network. USA Network. It's a American kind of yeah, obviously an American station. Kind of owned by the same. Kind of like the Sci-Fi like, Channel. They're like they like sister kind of channel. Yeah. And uh, our mom. We like, used to play in there all the time. Our mom was watching it one day. And we came in a little late. And like, what is this? You know, because we're getting into horror movies at a young age. You know, mm-hmm. even when we shouldn't have. We were too young to be watching that movie, but we, oh man, we did. But uh, yeah, and it really, it really did disturb us. Your performance was deeply, oh man. Yeah, like yeah. We, I was saying that people have stretched less than you stretched in that role in one Oscar. Yeah, like, like yeah, you, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's people who like yeah, yeah. you stretched so far and for that gave, role. You gave a complex, deep, and just twisted performance yeah. at such a young age. That was yeah, that was like, impressive. There's, yeah, there's yeah. so much to be yeah. said for that because. You could have just like been like the kid who was like, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm evil. But instead, yeah, yeah. you kind of like crafted this character within mm-hmm. yourself that was just like, 
Mm-hmm. Even it, it's such a cult classic now that it really stands the test of time, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, over uh, 20 years later. It's just, wow. You yeah. know, it's in. Yeah. Um, so how was the audition process for that movie? Were you excited? Yeah. Because, I mean, that's such a, a weighty role. You were probably mm-hmm. like, man, this would be cool. Role, yeah. Like, how were you going into the audition process and all that? And well, I, I remember for the audition, I did a lot of uh, recording at home. Mm-hmm. Um, I got I got the sides and. I, I wanted that role. I definitely wanted that role um, for all the right reasons, because, you know, everybody, I think, has like a psycho kid inside of them. that's just <laughs> waiting to come out. Right. And I certainly did. Um, so after doing a lot of self-taping and, and watching what I was doing and uh, and and finally, you know, basically I, I would self-tape just to like weed out the weird stuff. You know, like, oh, no, I'm doing something funny with my lip or, you know, that that type of stuff. Um, but it also really got me into the character, just the repetition, getting into the mindset. Right. Yeah. And then I recall going into the audition and uh, Doug Jackson, the director, was was there. Very and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he did a good job. Um, and we, we did the audition. We read the lines, or I I did the lines a couple of times, and he asked me if I could stick around, because they had another couple of people that they were auditioning, I think for for the role of Cammy. Okay. Um, And they wanted me to read lines with them. I I can't remember exactly. I mean, once again, we're talking like 30 years ago, right? Yeah. Or or 25 or or whatever. Uh, A long time ago. But I remember going out into the waiting room after having read my lines the first time, and I sat down and I thought to myself, "I'm the paper boy. Oh, <laughs> yes. I am Johnny McFarley. That's that's how much I related to the character. Um, how much I, I felt that I was connected to the character, you know. And uh, sure enough, I, I wound up getting getting the role, which was amazing because I got to work with Alexander Paul and William Catt. Yes. Yeah. Both two yeah, of our yeah. favorite actors also. Alexander Paul was like big on Baywatch around that time. So we were, I mean, that must've been kind of cool. I yeah. Mean, what was it like when you, when you first found out you got the role, like how'd you react or how'd you feel? I was, I was elated. I was excited. I was ecstatic. I was, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Get, getting to shoot a feature film in Montreal. Um, I, I didn't really know who Alexander Paul was actually. At the time, um, I had known I had known Baywatch, yeah. But the first time that I met her, uh, I actually asked her. I, I said, "Yeah, so hi, hi, Alexander. Nice to meet you. Which one do you play on Baywatch?" <laughs> and she said, "She said I play Lieutenant Stephanie Holden." Yep. And I was like, "Okay." And she could tell by my face that I was still a bit confused. And she, so she looks at me. She's like, "The one with no tits." <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Because I mean, all the other, like, you know, they all had big. Yeah. She's a really successful actress, too. I mean, yeah, she's like a big political activist. Yeah, big political hear, activist yeah, yeah. now. She's getting, really cool. you know, I mean, she's just, she, her career has been pretty awesome, too. And and then obviously, William Catt, you know, how was that? Cause, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, when, when I met William Catt, I thought of him as the guy from Greatest American Hero. Exactly, course, exactly. That, yeah. Right. Yeah. Jerry Curl kind of thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was great. I mean, you know, as a kid, when you get to work with these wonderful, uh, very famous people, it, it doesn't necessarily strike you. Um, like I, I wasn't really starstruck uh, because I a I was I was really accustomed to it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And B. You know, you don't think of success in the same way as you do when you're an adult. I think you, you're like, you're a kid, right? Um, yeah. Now, granted, I wasn't a young kid when I did Paperboy, but I had been in the business already for like a good five years and, and was accustomed to working with some pretty famous people. So, And you said your mom was really instrumental in helping you with that, too. So, yeah. And, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. You had your mom kind of helping yeah. to guide you through it. And then you just kind of, you're just like, hey, you're, like you said, you're kind of just reacting to everything, but you're, you're, you know, so you kind you're of, just going you don't get it, tripped yeah. up in it yet, but maybe later on you'll kind of would think about it. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. that was so cool. Looking back on things, that that's when I'm like, oh yeah, I, I actually worked with that guy. Fuck. That's pretty <laughs> crazy. You know, but at the time it was like, 
um, I wasn't so much thinking about the star factor. I was more just meeting them as a person. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Working with them like their their colleagues, because that's actually what it is. And uh, and yeah, so it, it was a great experience. But I never really got starstruck or or thought too hard about who it was that I was working with, you know? Yeah, and uh, you got to work with Happy Gilmore's grandmother. Well, you got to kill her on uh, street. Francis Bay. Francis yeah, Bay yeah. really kind yeah. of. That was, that was an intense scene. I remember that's a scene that really stuck with me She's as a She's this kid. legendary yeah, character yeah. actress, and you're just like, you know, slowly suffocating her and making her think you're You like, make her think you kill her dog, but you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> like, that scene is so intense. That part horrified me as a kid. And, like, yeah, yeah. I remember um, another thing. Uh, you wore your red Converse red, in that There was movie. an amazing amount of red Converse shots in that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, so they made him look cool. So I remember, yeah, a few years later, I think we were, like, 12 or 13th birthday, our parents gave us like 50 bucks to just so spend at the mall and Ian immediately bought a pair of red Converse. Yeah, my whole life I wanted a pair of red Converse yeah, because yeah, of your yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. And we, we used to like, I used to like grab like my dad's pickaxe. No, no, like, every time we walked with a pickaxe, we would kind of We would copy. have it by our side and we would like walk that, like you. copy in the that movie. scene in the end where you're chasing and then after him with I used to like grab Ivan. I would put Ivan in my arms and hold him like he was Bridget Tierney. I was always in Nepal and like we'd run and be like, yeah, Johnny's to... coming, Johnny's coming. Yeah, that's a scene we used, we used to, to act that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like, so, times, yeah. like your performance was just so like spot on. We just like, it, yeah, yeah. Here's a question about, yeah, what was it like playing such just a complex, disturbing character at such a young age? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was it was amazing because it was it was make believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right? it's make believe. I mean, um, it, it's like instead of going out with my friends and dressing up. Well, I mean, I, I was 14 at the time that I filmed Paperboy, so I was a little older than that but uh but you know when, when you're when you're younger especially halloween parties even into your teens right you like to dress up you like to go to halloween parties because it's fun you get to play someone else you know i got to do that and get paid for it <laughs> nice. that's kind of the way that i looked at it um playing such a complex character because johnny was pretty complex yeah, he, um and there were there were a lot of layers to it uh but I just had fun with it, Good. you know. I I I just got into the character. I reached inside. I was very uh, proficient at acting. I had, I had done a lot of it at that point. So like anything else, practice makes perfect, you know. Um, I just had fun with it, and uh, the director and and the other actors let me go where I wanted to with the character, so I didn't feel hindered or restricted at all. I didn't have to work within boundaries. I just, you know, when, when you're given ownership of something, I think you do a better job. I think so too. Yeah. It was off the wall, but it was just so perfect. It was like, yeah. man, you like, it could have been better, like honestly. Yeah, and our dad was his town paper boy. He grew up in yeah. a small town in Midland, Pennsylvania. So that we kind of like that interested us, you know. We were always interested in the whole paper boy. We dynamic. grew up in the middle of the country, like yeah, we grew like, up in like on, a, like a farm, so we didn't have like paper boys. The outskirts of like Nashville. So like we went and visited my aunt, yeah, and again. so like I I brought my bike with me to Memphis that weekend, and yeah. like I rigged up like a, a grocery bag on the front and start all the papers that nobody wanted to pick up. I like started collecting them from their yards, and I was driving around her neighborhood, just driving around her neighborhood, throwing, throwing papers, throwing pretending papers. like I was like you in the movie. <laughs> so like you know you kind of. You had your thing going in that movie. You were just, you know, you had your screwdriver, you had your bike, you were set. So you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And your bat, the bat too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the bat against the uh, the fence. Yes. There, that that scene that stands out in my mind. Actually, uh, my son asked me. At, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago. He had asked me if he could see the paper boy because he had never seen it before. About that. Has yeah. he watched it yet? Yeah, we we watched it, and you know, it's not something that I watch very often. Um, because obviously like I was in it. Right. So, um, I, I, I kind of know the story a little bit, but one thing that stood out to me was when I pushed Francis Bay, getting back to Francis, when I pushed her on the bed and I say, take a load off. And I was, I was like, Oh shit, I did that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, obviously it was all done safely and everything, but, uh, you know, that, that sort of took me aback cause I had forgotten that I had actually pushed her and, and and when I saw it on screen, I envisioned her kind of like snapping like a twig, because <laughs> she's this old lady, and, and yeah. you know I was I was a younger teenage uh, murderer, <laughs> I guess. But uh, but yeah, my so my son finally has seen the movie, yes. and he thought it was pretty good. Awesome. He liked it. 
Oh man, awesome. that is so. Did any parts like particularly disturb him? Like I remember when I was little, you know, I was really close to my dad, and when you kill your dad with the golf club, I was oh, like, oh man, that destroyed us. <laughs> that really freaked me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dad's, right. dad was being so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that that's exactly what Mateo said. He's like, he's a really nice father, Dad. You shouldn't have killed him. <laughs> what are you talking about? He never. He was never home. He never showed up. He didn't even buy me the the golf club bag. In the color that I wanted. Yeah, yeah. And now he buys it yellow because it was 20% off. Like, I'm sorry. He deserved it. No, and he's yeah. like, he's pulling stuff out of his car at one point. He's like, I don't want to have to deal with this right now. When he has to, like, go talk to you at one point in the movie, oh, I noticed. Yeah. yeah, he was an errant father. They kind of gave you a little, him yeah. a little leeway to make you, yeah. make him kind of deserve it. You know, yeah, a little, yeah, a little, yeah, little. yeah, 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 <laughs> there's yeah. There's a lot of iconic lines in that movie, uh. Like, before you're about to hit the rack of ribs she thinks is the dog, you're like, bow wow. Peach is the dog. <laughs> you know, say it, say it. You got to say bow wow. <laughs> yeah. Bow wow. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that that was in the script, uh, if I recall. Uh, Ding Dong the Witch is Dead, I think, was in the script. I don't. I I, I honestly can't remember what was ad libbed and, and what wasn't. Um, it was a long time ago. Uh, I remember, you know, having some input in, in a couple of the different shots. Okay. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, um, like, I, I remember in the bedroom when I flip out. Yeah. I started hitting the bed with the bat. Yeah. Right? I remember Doug was, was thinking about how he was going to film that. And he's like, oh, where should we do this? Da, 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 da. And uh, I made a suggestion. I was like, well, why don't you put the camera down by the bed there and I can hit it. And, and Rodney, the DOP, gets down and he looks at it and he goes, well, actually, that's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. You know, and then I said, yeah, and, and I can fall down onto the bed and grab my head, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that kind of works, and and you know what, wound up keeping it in the film. Nice. So, you was, know, yeah, there you go. It was a great. <laughs> yeah, I basically, like directed a shot, some shots of the film. That's yeah, awesome. There you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that I that I directed any of the shots in the film, but but I I had I had a little bit of creative input in, into it, anyways, which. Which was great because you know when when you're doing a, a project like that, it's nice to to be a team. Like everybody obviously has their own very specific individual roles that they play in in the making of the final product. But uh, you know, being being able to make suggestions and, and have an open dialogue with people about things is awesome. That that's how projects should be. Oh yeah, the st- the funny story of how we got that VHS. Um... You know, uh, we hadn't seen it in a long time, and uh, it was junior year of high school. We were taking, like, an ACT prep course. Then on the way home, we passed by this old video store, and they were selling all their VHSs, and then we finally were able to buy a copy That was the that. first one we bought. We're like, I go back to the room, and there's this walls of VHSs, and I see that, and I'm like, oh, my God. I ran to the guy. I'm like, are these for sale? And he's like, yeah, they're, they're actually trying to get rid of all these VHSs. It was right when DVD was taking off. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, this is happening. We yanked yeah, it. Yeah, and it was a school night. We had to be up early the next day, but we didn't care. We went ahead and just watched yeah. the VHS. It was the first time yeah. we were seeing it unedited because yeah, we only yeah. seen it on like Sci Fi and USA. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like we finally got to see it. It was like this religious experience. <laughs> it was we were, crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it was honestly like seeing it again for the first time. It was like seeing it for the first time. So yeah, we were, yeah. it was like. It, it, that was a fun, that's a fun memory. Yeah, yeah really good memory. Should have been studying ACT, but we were the paper boy. Paper boy. Yeah. I'm so honored. <laughs> the first VHS that you bought was my movie? Yeah, there's like these well, walls. the first one. Uh, well, uh, it, was, it was like they had all these VHS for sale in the store and like. They were getting rid of them, yeah. I mean, but it was like yours was like the first one we were just like, It was okay. the first one. We bought like a stack, but that was that was the first, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was the first one we were looking for. Like, the first one like, we found. That was the yeah, one that really yeah. mattered. We were just like, okay, look. The first yeah, 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 yeah. So it was great. I'm yeah. just curious. The, the reason that that was the first one that you picked was because you had seen it before and you liked it? Yeah, we've seen it as kids on TV. It was like, never, it was never like one of our it. favorites, yeah. so we were just like, man, I cannot believe I'm holding this right now when yeah, we bought yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, ah, so we got home yeah. and immediately watched it. It was just like the best experience ever. It was fun, yeah, yeah. yeah. One so. of those nights you always remember. It's a movie that always stuck with us, too. Yeah, we yeah, could yeah. never, we never, like, it always stuck yeah, with yeah, us. We're yeah. like, man, that movie, The Paperboy, and, like, our older brother, and then, like, our mom watched, one, watched it with us. On yeah, the... she, we watched it again the other night. We watched yeah. it with our mom again. Yeah, And this yeah. is one, it's also one of the movies we watched, like, three or four times a year, like, literally. Yeah, yeah, we have two copies of it now. Like, we got one. Yeah, we just, like, throw we have like a, Especially we around just, Halloween and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's like one of those movies we watch a lot. It's one of our all-time favorites. So it, yeah, yeah. So getting to do this interview has been really surreal. It's great. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And especially, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just so honored that uh, that you know you guys are having me on. Oh man, we're honored to have you. You know, our, yeah. our, 
our first guest was Greg Kinnear, and we're like, man, who who could follow Greg Kinnear? We're like, Mark Mallow. Ah. We're like, <laughs> pretty good pronunciation, by the way. I'll give you that one. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Like, um, did people like classmates were they like afraid of you after seeing <laughs> this movie, or did they think you were like a lot like that character and didn't want to, you know, like were you know didn't want to set you off or anything like that, or how'd that go? Oh, they were, they were afraid of me before I did the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think that, that my, uh, my friendships or anything changed or my relationships with any of my classmates changed after I did the film. Um, they, they knew me. I was always, I was the kid that was always away from school doing acting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like I, I remember at one point, uh, I had a drama teacher. And yeah, I had never taken drama class before. This, this was the first time that we, we had to do it. And she talks to us and she's like, okay, so everybody go, pre- we're going to pretend we're trees, <laughs> trees in the wind, you know? And I looked at her and I just, I, I think I was a little bit of a snot back then. I think I just got up and started walking out of the room. And she looked at me, she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that, I'm, I, I can't work like this. <laughs> I can't work like this. I'm not acting like a tree. And uh, she she kind of gave me a little bit of hell. Um, but I didn't care. I, I walked out. I'm like, drama's not about acting like you're a tree. But yeah. that was that was just my attitude at the time, right? Um, nowadays, fuck, I'll, I'll act like a tree. <laughs> I know you had a lot of fun doing The Paperboy. Like, what's another movie you had, like, a lot of fun yeah, doing? Like, like, what's a good well, movie? Well, you said the tech war movies. Anything else? Like, you just... Oh. just so many, so many good times doing uh, doing Road to Avonlea, um, because I, I mean, I got to meet so many people there. Doing theater was awesome too. Like uh, uh, Les Mis was was such an amazing experience. I was really young. That was the first project that I had done. Um, but I mean, I I got to meet people like Mickey Rooney. Ooh, man, legend, oh, wow. legendary. You know, I have a picture of me with Mickey Rooney. And Donald O'Connor. Oh, man. That's and the crazy. look on my face is just utter shock. Yeah. Because when people said that I would get my picture taken with Mickey and Donald, I was picturing Disney characters. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, um, films that I had a really good time on. I had a lot of fun doing Bananas. Okay. Uh, and it's from Sunny Quebec, which later on the name got changed to Young Adventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have the DVD of that, actually. Somewhere, like, It's yeah, from, like, yeah. 2002, the DVD. They released it then. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it's sure. kind of, yeah, yeah. They did, there was some sort of DVD release in 2002. We ended up finding a copy of that. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, But that must have been fun. Did, I know you didn't really film in the Amazon. Did, but, you, uh, did you? I don't know. <laughs> no. Maybe we didn't go to the Amazon. That was all down in Montreal also. Canada stands in for everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah Canada yeah. can just be anything, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More or less, you know, um... Like even uh, even the exteriors for Road to Avonlea were done in Ontario. Uh, we filmed the exteriors in Uxbridge. You okay. know, we we didn't go to PEI to, to actually do them. Um, they had like red soil brought in specifically for doing that. There was a lighthouse. They built a lighthouse in the middle of a farmer's field. Okay. Okay, for Road to Avonlea. Wow. And one big problem that we had on set was the airplane noise. Oh, okay. People would fly light aircraft and see a lighthouse in the middle of a farmer's field and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so they would be doing circles, yeah, you know, flying their place, trying to figure out why there was this goddamn lighthouse in the middle of a farmer's field. And the sound guy would be going nuts, oh, right? Because we're trying to fill the scene. He's like, these fucking planes are always flying over and doing circles around us. You know, I used to joke that we needed, like, a road to Avonlea anti-aircraft cannon or something just, just to <laughs> appease the, the sound guys. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's movies. It's, um, it's television. That's one thing that I've really tried to instill in my son is that it's all make-believe. It's not real, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, you can do anything. I mean, SOB, the, the music video for SOB. Oh, yeah. I should have in the basement of a townhouse on on green screen. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's immaculate green screen work too. We were just yeah. We, it was pretty. We love watching that really video. Good effects. Yeah, like yeah. The, it's, and then, it's uh, fun. And what do you think Johnny McFarley is doing today? 
<laughs> He'd probably be out of prison by now. He was underage when yeah. he went in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably was not tried as an adult. And he was abused by his mother, so yeah, they probably took that into yeah into yeah consideration. Johnny McFarley is still in the psychiatric ward because if he wasn't, there would be a sequel. Okay. Oh, you ever okay. thought about where a sequel would go? I, you know, I, I've had a couple of ideas that, that I've, I've bounced off some people. Um, uh, I've had, you know, fans really want a sequel. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. Well, there's so many places it can go. Yeah. Yeah. Two oh. other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The possibilities are endless. I mean, what, what, what does he do? Um, does Johnny get out of jail and I don't know, start working for a newspaper as a distributor yes. right? and befriend one of the paper boys and sort of, you know, become his role model. Yeah. And then this kid is a psycho and goes after another family. Like, who knows, right? Um, yeah, if uh, the, the thing is, obviously, I don't have the rights to the paper boy. It, it, I, I'm not the one who produced it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's something that I've considered. I've, I've thought about, you know, what is Johnny doing nowadays? What what happens if he does get out of jail? Because clearly he knows his rights. Oh yeah, <laughs> I have rights. Okay. He needs a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in, in my mind, I feel you know a little better knowing that he's still under lock and key and, and being taken care of by this, the psychiatric system. And, uh, you know, maybe one day he'll get out, but I tell you, there's going to be a whole other slew of problems when he does. Oh yeah. yeah. He'll be yeah. grappling with the new Johnny and the old Johnny coming back. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe oh, one day, but we're holding that hope, man, because yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be incredible to see you return to that one day. Oh, oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but we know his band just right, right into a script. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'd love to see a, a great script come across my table and uh, Some ideas for that. Yeah, like, yeah, we, maybe we'll get something we, together. We definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. growing up, we've all, and then even now, we've, we've always got the passion for it. Yeah. What you're you're doing now is this big music career, and yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, getting so much buzz and all these write-ups yeah, and yeah, all these yeah. interviews. Cool ass is your is your um is your your, your musician your, name? your name? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that that's what I'm I'm releasing my music under the name of is cool ass. You know, because it's cool ass music, right? That, yes, it is. It is. It is freaking so cool. And um, yeah, so you know, you have a, you got an awesome YouTube page where you post a lot of videos, a lot of covers, yeah, cool things like ass that. Cool ass on YouTube. Watch his videos. Yes, They're cool hilarious. ass on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. And then we were talking about how uh, what a what a you know like triple threat you are as a musician because uh, you do all the effects. You, you act, got the moves. You, you compose. You sing. You do the vocals. You do direct your videos. You edit them. So we were saying you're like a triple threat. And there's and like the boldness to your music. There's no boldness in music today at all. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. you know. It's all just this it's edgy. We like it. Yeah. It's yeah, edgy. Yeah. It's bold. And, you, and you're bringing some awesome stuff to the table in terms of that. So it's just mm -hmm. like. Yeah, we think it's, it's just, just it's just good time music. You want to sit back and have a good yeah. time, just yeah. yeah and then yeah. the melodies they just stick in your head, yeah, and, and yeah. like like I said, your songs are catchy in all the good ways, mm -hmm. and like in you know your original music, because you know his YouTube page, he's got his original music videos, his original music, he's got all kind of content on there. It's just definitely need to check that out. Yeah, yeah. Viewers uh, check it viewers out. check yeah, that yeah. out. What are some of your influences as a musician and all that kind of stuff? Like who did you grow up listening to? Maybe that kind of stuck because you you grew up in such a good era, the eighties, nineties, and even the two thousands. Like yeah, yeah, lots of group. Yeah. No, I, and, and that's exactly it. I mean, my influences were from, you know, when I was a teenager, uh, basically. I, I mean, um, that was 90s grunge, man. Yes, exactly. You know, like, I remember learning the guitar, and the first time I heard Nirvana was on Saturday Night Live. Oh. And they played Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I heard it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is horrible noise. I can't stand this. And then, you know, I plugged my guitar in and added some distortion. And I was like, fuck yeah. I totally get why they do this. This is amazing. And, and that's when I became, uh, became like a, a real, a really big fan of grunge. Um, Nirvana was a huge influence on me. And, and um, Veruca Salt, man. I'm, I love Veruca Salt. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are, you, you know, the, the way that Nina Gordon and Louise Post could put out amazing rockin', head bopping tunes, but still with with uh, really good um, vocal harmonies. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I think I became a really big fan of vocal harmony because of Veruca Salt, you know? And then, I mean, there was Garbage. Um, obviously, Weezer back in the day when they were doing good stuff. Um, yeah. uh, like Smashing Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danko Jones. Okay. Love Danko Jones. He's, he's uh, from Toronto. Okay. Right? And, and, man, his stuff is, especially his earlier stuff, it's just dripping with attitude, you know? And, and it's just, yeah, man, like 90s music it is really, really where I got a big influence from. Um, and, I, and it just sort of happens when, when I record a song and uh, the final product I'm happy with, I don't do it intentionally. It just has a 90s flavor to it because that's what, that's what I like. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely fresh. Bread and butter yeah. is what you grew up it's with. It's fresh, yeah. it's fresh, it really is. And, um, it's great, yeah. We, uh, I re- in your interview you recently did with Extra Wave, and they talked about your uh, song in uh, Fuck You, COVID-19, and you talked about how you were working on a, um, some other music, and then this whole pandemic happened, and you kind of just got inspired, and you started kind of like thinking up a melody in your head, and you kind of went from there. How did that kind of manifest itself? Well, I mean, I was going to I was gonna record some other songs, um, and then when COVID hit, all of a sudden... Um, I, kind of, I had to completely re- rearrange my life. Mm-hmm. You know, like going to the grocery store yeah, became yeah. a royal pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. Everyone had to stand, you know, six feet apart. Um, I wound up actually just ordering my food in. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I, I would, I would uh, you, you can now get delivery. So I would get groceries delivered to my door <laughs> instead. Um, everything sort of changed. I, any anytime I got the mail, you know, uh, or or a package delivered, or even the grocery deliveries, now I'm there with my kid, and, and we're sanitizing it. Like we're spraying all of the items down with rubbing alcohol. Yeah. You know, I'm not buying fresh veggies. Uh, you know, like I'm not buying fresh broccoli and stuff anymore. I'm buying it in frozen packages because it's easier to sanitize. Yeah. Uh, there were so many different levels layers that, that I had to adjust that, you know, I, I really had to put recording on hold. And by the time I finally, you know, become accustomed to, uh, or, or that not accustomed, but that I had adapted to this new normal that, that we're all living in, uh, you know, doing meetings by Zoom or Skype in, instead of meeting people in person, um, not really getting to hang out with my friends at all. Um, you know, there, there was a lot that changed. And so when I had settled into sort of a, a routine that fit this new normal, I had this new song in my head. It, it, it was, it, it just, like all my music, it just pops in there. Awesome. You know, and, and I have the idea and I'm bopping my head and then I go to sleep and I wake up the next morning and it's developed a little bit further, you know, and, and so at that point I was ready to, started doing some recording again and it was so good it was so much in my mind and so relevant to what everyone was experiencing that i thought that's the one i'm going to record instead of all the other material that i had planned to yeah you just got you know inspired you know yeah yeah. it's like it incorporates what a lot of us are feeling yeah and it's just hilarious oh man it's just like so many things working together and it's this awesome recipe and it's yeah boom in our little bit in that music video we kind of wanted to like we made it like a dream sequence it feels like a bad dream so we wanted to kind of get creative with it and then show the whole i want ours to be like a dream sequence it's brother against brother yeah Yeah, it's like showing what the the pandemic has done putting brother against brother stealing you know i steal his toilet paper and his hands it's a toy gun but it looks like a real gun i I steal his hands Got it, yeah. So it's like you're not my brother anymore. I need toilet paper. And yeah, yeah. Sanitizer. So that was really fun to get to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when uh, when I first saw that, I laughed my ass off. <laughs> yeah. I laughed my ass off, and then my son, because of course you know my son gets to see me work and stuff, and uh, um, so he, he he knows a couple of bad words, you know, <laughs> that that he he also knows not to repeat them at school. Oh yeah. yeah. But. Uh, yeah, when he saw the footage of you guys, he was so impressed. He was oh, like, that, that, that's, those guys know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, everybody did such a phenomenal job. I got so many good submissions. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm really, really happy with the final result of oh, the music video. 
he keeps showing it to everybody we know sharing it. Our mom's had the song stuck in her head for like a week or so. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody we know is loving it. So yeah, like, yeah. In, especially the video and then the lyrics, the way like your voice, like you're you always you've always had this voice that really carries, especially in your acting and then when you're when in your vocals when you do music mm -hmm. and you got a good voice. Yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. an incredible voice. So it's like to, it's like I think it's like just it really kind of encapsulated all that into the song. So it was just, that was really cool. Though. And I can't wait to see what you do next. We're really excited. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, the, all, your music is so awesome and it's getting all this buzz, you know, and like, it's just good. It's, yeah. We can't wait to see fuck you COVID-19 on MTV. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, you know it, growing up, we never thought like we were, we were eight years old, wetting our pants, watching Paperboy on TV. Never thought we get to be in a music video with Johnny McFarley. Yeah. With, with Mark Miller. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> All time our movies, we never thought we'd get the opportunity to be in like one of your music videos. Yeah, if you would have told me at eight years old, yeah, you're gonna get to be in a music video with this guy one day. I would yeah, have like, been like, I no been way. Like, you're crazy. Yeah, you're yeah. crazy. You're, what are you talking about? You know. So yeah, it's like dreams it's, come true. Yeah, it's yeah, seeing, yeah, yeah. seeing <laughs> like you've you've had such a prolific career. Like you've just you know you you evolved. You know, stage, acting, music, acting, everything. Like you've just everything's kind of manifested itself, and like you you know. Like you just do, you do it all, man. You do and it music all. and videos get to incorporate all of that stuff. Yeah, you know exactly. Your, yeah, and like, great. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, for, I got to say that I'm extremely honored that you guys chose to be in the video as well. I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody who, are, who participated because, you know, I, I really, I really wanted to show that we could all come together in this pandemic, and I wanted to make something that was relevant to what was going on. And the fact that that, you know, we're all skyping, we're all zooming. Um, we're all stuck at home. Why not have the footage of, of people at home? Exactly. And they all get their own creativity got to shine through too. And, and uh, you guys did a brilliant sequence. I, I love it with with the with, with the, the, the toy gun stealing yeah. the toilet paper because that was a big thing at the beginning. Right. I mean, yeah. Toilet paper I, ran. Hand yeah. sanitizer. Ran Even out. now, any like you go to a store on any given day, there's no toilet paper. There's no hand certain stores. It's all yeah, yeah, sold yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah. it's just like. It, 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 yeah, it kind of reflected that a little bit. People were going nuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what your video does, and then your song. It kind of like every everybody in the video has their own little spin, their own little story with their little segments, mm -hmm. and then your lyrics kind of just go along with that perfectly. And, yeah. and you know, like like I, I, like I just yeah, said, it's edited very well. Yeah, you put something together that ended up being really incredible, and obviously yeah, yeah. the buzz you're getting for it is really shown through with that. Yeah, I'm really excited. And uh, yeah, we yeah. can't, like we said, we can't wait to see what you come up with next. Yeah, I can't and, thank you enough for you yeah. know being on our show. Yeah. You twin time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's my pleasure. Like it's I said, pleasure. We want to keep in touch in the future. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you yeah. know all yeah. that. Just well, on something. Yeah, just yeah, for yeah. sure, man. Because like, just you know, your energy is unmatched, and uh, you know your work. It's great throughout. to see you still out there kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. So well, like, all that. That's. Uh, that, that's what I do. I, I One thing that I love about doing all the cool ass stuff is that I'm in charge of everything. Exactly. You know, um, I mean, I'm not working for anyone. This is all my own stuff. The, uh, the video production, the music production, uh, the vocals, like it, there are times where I'll, I'll be mixing something down and, and I think to myself, you know, that vocal's not quite right. I could just go and re-record. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I can do anything I want. Um, nothing gets put out until I'm happy with it. You know, and and I mean, like all art, art's never finished. It's only abandoned. Okay. You know? okay. I like that. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's true because you can you can listen to something that you did, you know, uh, a year ago, and <laughs> think, ah, oh, man, I wish I had done this differently or whatnot, right? And and especially when you're caught up in the middle of the process. Um, every minor detail becomes bigger than life. You know, like you're thinking to yourself, oh, do I have that EQ'd right? Or, oh, what if I bring up that kick drum? Or, you know, it, when you're doing video, oh, should I increase the red a little bit? Maybe there's too much green. Like, I I can nitpick forever on stuff, right? So, uh, so when I finally have it where I'm happy, um, then art is abandoned. At that point, you just, you have to move on. And in all honesty, when I, when I do look back on things, I'm extremely proud of the decisions that I made. I mean, yeah, you can always say, oh, on a different day, I would have done it a little differently or whatnot. But it's, it's definitely a labor of love. It's not, you know, something that I just want to pump out. I, uh, I, I have very high standards because I want to look back on it 10 years from now 
and think, fuck, man, I did a good job on that. Yeah. I, you know, pat myself on the back, right? <laughs> killing it, it's man. A great way to, it's a great mentality. He's still killing it. His body count was four in Paperboy, and he's yeah, still counted, killing if it. Count, if you count his... <laughs> But was it four or was one of them a paraplegic? Mom was like, oh wow, we didn't that's, have to. Par- that's, that's that's four and a half. Okay. That's like five, and we'll give you we'll give you. And the William Cat was like half because you almost got him. Yeah, okay, so yeah. we'll give you five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give you five. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it's it's been awesome, and then we're so glad you're like yeah, we're yeah. so glad you're still in the industry and stuff. You know, a lot of people just you know they they get burnt out on it or whatever. But like you, your passion has really carried you like through yeah, yeah. the industry so well and like it's yeah, just yeah. it's awesome to see like and yeah. then the fact that you're out there killing it with music now it's just like man yeah, yeah, we're yeah. like it means the world to us so yeah. it means the world to us that you agreed to and thanks for taking interview. time out of your weekend yeah busy know, schedule yeah, yeah, i'm sure yeah, yeah. you know you're doing a lot of promotion for your new music and all that so like i'm sure you're busy oh. and yeah, yeah. It, it's been pretty crazy with but but crazy good yeah you know like just a lot of magazine interviews um you, you know most mostly magazine interviews, a lot of magazine articles. It's been keeping me busy, Good. definitely. But but I love it. You know, I mean, uh, when when you create art, as you guys know, oh yeah, yeah, you don't just want it to you know sit on your hard drive of your computer and and just to show friends. You want to get it out to people because the whole idea of creating art is being able to share it and being able. In my case, I like to lift people's spirits. Oh, man, you know? you so well, yeah. 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 You want to make people feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I like about Cool Ass is, is you know, uh, I mean, there are some people that focus on doing deep, uh, thought-provoking music or uh, creating projects that, uh, that 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 pull on your on your emotions um, in a in a negative way sometimes, and and that's not that's not a bad thing. I mean, art always has to speak of the human condition. Yes, in, yes. in my personal opinion, right? And uh, and I do like watching movies and listening to music that makes me think and makes me reflect on on our purpose and our own existence and all that. Um, but with Cool Ass, you know, I find I really like to write lighter stuff, funnier stuff, because I just want to laugh and have a good time. That's mm-hmm. kind of the state of mind that I want to be in. And that's the state of mind that I like sharing with people. Yeah. So... And that's the whole key is is being able to share it with people. So I'm totally stoked that the video is going to be on MTV. You guys are going to be on MTV. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny McFarlane got us on MTV. Like how serendipitous is that? Legendary, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. legendary. Like like I said, he does it all. Dude. Like Mark yeah. Malou, you're, like, the, you're the man, dude. You're the that's man, dude. And say. like yeah, we, yeah. we can't thank you enough for like giving us such an opportunity to. Yeah. So like. Man, like, just we really, we really are like, we're, we're endlessly grateful. Yeah, we're psyched, yeah. man. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what, pretty. What? Yeah. And yeah. again, thanks for being on the show. You know, I yeah. guess we could talk forever, you know. Maybe, oh, man. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do this again sometimes yeah. to talk about more exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. We, we yeah. 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 Because, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah, let's, let's do another one at some point for sure. You've yeah, had yeah. such an amazing career. So much we can talk about. Yeah. So many stories. But it's just, this has been an incredible interview. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we're, we're so glad that we had you on our show. Uh, yeah, 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 you're like one of our favorite people. So, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already wow. got together, so that's been awesome. And um, just I warn of- you, I am susceptible to flattery. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. I, I really appreciate being here, and uh, yeah, it's great to meet you guys in person. Exactly. Yeah, finally, yeah, finally yeah. Been for a while, like social media stuff. So it's yeah, just yeah. this has been awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear. Let's do a three-way pound. Come yeah. On. Absolutely. Where did it go? Into the camera. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Ian, Ivan, thank you so much. That, that was a blast. Definitely. Definitely Take was. care, Mark. We'll be in touch. And you have an sure. awesome, awesome uh, you know, rest of the year, what have you. You just, you know, keep killing it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. And, and make sure you let me know about this video, too, because I want to watch it. I, yeah. I want to show it to all my friends. Yeah, we'll be, well, yeah, yeah. It'll Once you on, get the link up, we'll, we'll yeah, send it It'll to be you, soon. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah, man. So we'll definitely in touch. All right, Mark. Right on, guys. Okay. Rock on. Thank you. Right. Rock on. Say, say yeah. leave my family alone. Say leave my family alone. From, From Paper Boy. Leave my family alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right guys. Take it easy. Thanks, buddy. So much for forever. New plans. Gotta move on. Think of us when they're playing this song.